Well, good morning, our beloveds. We shall try a take two, as our another did not like the first version. First of all, we just wish to share with you all that much of what you are feeling is an energetic imprint of the collective. <clears throat> when you have an election such as North America, America, USA, is having right now, it matters. It matters because this is the consequence of your past choices, your past actions, your past belief systems, your past tribulations, your past renovations, your past relevations. It doesn't really matter. The fact is that your country finds itself today because of the hatred of the Hitler energy. It is there for the taking. And for those who are buying into the rhetoric of hate and division being the answer, the solution, it's not. It never has been. But here you are now about to reap your karmic consequences. When the book of Revelation speaks of the end times, which you are definitely in now, but it's not an end as anticipated or promised, but merely the beginning of a new journey for you all. But when the end times comes, America will not have a seat at the table. And why is that? Why is it that America will not have a seat at the table? Because it has lost its focus. It is no longer governing for the benefit of all. Not that it ever has, but the division and the divide is even greater now. It is merely the wealthy trying to grab up those last coins before they annihilate you all. And you can't even see it. The policies that you support, the ideology which you propose, and the meaningless rhetoric which is shared daily is just a measure of your lack of consciousness. If Jesus were to come here, truly Jesus were to come here, what would he say or do? He would toss the tables at many of your mega churches, at many of your politicians, fundraisers, especially Trump. We're going to highlight him now because many of you still are deluded, which is fine. But Trump is the Antichrist in a different form, not the literal Antichrist, but he is the opposite of Christ, and therefore he is the Antichrist. He does not support love. He does not support hope. He does not support loving those lesser than him or different than him. He is just a hateful, vindictive, spiteful individual. Now, does that mean that the current president, Biden, is the end-all, be-all? No. But believe it or not, his heart is in the right place. His ideology may be stuck in the uh, 18th century, 19th century, because he is old. He is old and he comes from a time and an ideology that was passed down for many generations. But his heart is pure, believe it or not. Though his actions, again, are flawed. But Trump, do not delude yourself. He is the opposite of Christ here to lead you astray. And for those of you who choose not to see it, well, God help you, literally. Because if you cannot distinguish between Trump's vibration and the vibration of love, then nothing will. And that in itself should train you to not be entrained by political ideology. Stop watching TV. Begin reading the Bible again for those of you who believe in that. 
and begin to read the revelationary prophecies of how many who claim to be Christians will be led astray in the last days. Well, hello. Can you see the writing on the wall? Yep, like with Daniel. So just pay attention. It's not a judgment. It is merely a warning, a waking up shake that you all have lost your center, your ground. And it's not that the liberals are perfect either, but if Jesus were to come here, he would fund public schools. He would fund public education. He would fund free health care. He would fund safety nets for individuals. He would create a sense of community and network again. And he would bring love back to the political process. He would bring it in through his own imagination, through his own belief system, through his own knowing. And for those of you who claim to love the Christ, but do things that are unchristlike, that begs the question, who do you believe? The church and the politicians or your own heart? Find that space within you that believes in becoming a better person than your predecessors and figuring out a way to make it work instead of coming up with a hundred reasons why it won't. Your belief system matters more than you realize, especially if you're a negative Nelly, because you drag the boat down. You slow it down. You try to drown those inhabitants on the boat who are just trying to stay afloat. You have never known what it is to live in an energy of abundance but it certainly is not where you are residing today. So believe that there is something better and find the generosity within your own heart. Maybe give money to a homeless person, even though you know they're going to do something bad with it, because what they do with it is of their um, conscience. What you do with yours is of your conscience. You need not worry about controlling others, only helping them. Find them a place to eat. Find them a place to sleep. Find them a place to heal. You think being homeless is a choice. Being homeless is about as much of a choice as being a heroin addict. Right? And now we'll go into the next thing. Addict. Addict. Right? You're so quick to judge who has an addiction. But you too have an addiction. Your addiction is to hatred, to lack of love. So maybe you could say, we are all just stuck in our trauma wounds. And when we use something to help us to manage our trauma, our triggers, our hurts, that's what addiction looks like. It is not a choice. When you get to a point where you have no other choices or option, To choose the path of addiction is a foregone conclusion because all hope is lost. Much like those who see suicide as the only remaining option. It is your lack of compassion that is causing people to die and to live in lesser than circumstances. Help to rise the tide so that all boats will be lifted by simply being loving instead of siphoning off your piece of the ocean and holding it hostage so others can never receive any benefit from it. Your lack of love is what is killing America, not your politics, believe it or not. It is your lack of love for self and for others, being generous with what you have, being kind and understanding and compassionate and relationally simplistic. Stop being so smart and go back to the basics. What did you learn in kindergarten? To share, 
to open the door, to be kind and generous, and to play nicely in the sandbox. It matters. If we could, we would send you all back to kindergarten and have you uh, be taught by the kindest, most loving kindergarten teacher to remind you of who you really are. Find it within your souls if you can. And if not, don't be surprised at the consequences that result for you from your hate-filled energetic imprint because there is karma and it's not punishment, it's merely a reflection of who you have been and what you have sown. You shall reap what you sow, each and every one of you. There is no way to get around it this time. Find yourself, hug yourself, love yourself, groom yourself, and then grow yourself. And so it is namaste. Namaste.